That is actually uh, one of the devices that was recently approved by the FDA. It's called the Watchman device. Um, this device actually is used to occlude the left atrial appendage in uh, patients who suffer from atrial fibrillation. The idea behind it is that uh, we know patients who have atrial fibrillation uh, are at an increased risk of uh, having a stroke. Why is that? Uh, because uh, in atrial fibrillation, the blood tends to stagnate in the atrium, clots form in the, atrial, in the left atrial appendage, and if that clot breaks loose, then it goes to the rest of the body, predominantly to the brain, and the patient has a stroke. Studies have shown that 90% of uh, uh, patients who have strokes, usually it's because they have clots in the left atrial appendage, whereby the reason to actually think about a device such as this one that allows us to occlude the left atrial appendage and hopefully reduce the risk of stroke. At least that was the idea before the research was done. This is not a device that tends to capture clots as much as it is a device that jails the clot in the left atrial appendage, which is the main source of the clots in patients with atrial fibrillation. Traditionally, patients who have atrial fibrillation to reduce their risk of stroke are treated with anticoagulants, either the traditional uh, warfarin or coumadin or the newer anticoagulants. However, there are patients who cannot take anticoagulation, and there are patients who have problems taking anticoagulations, and there are patients who find it a hassle to take anticoagulation. Uh, and there are patients who have increased risk of bleeding because they take other medications that increase the risk of bleeding when they take additional anticoagulants. And these are the patients who might benefit from a device such as this one. So these are patients who have atrial fibrillation because we have to adhere to what the study indications were. These are patients who have non-valvular atrial fibrillations, who have increased risk of stroke based on their CHADS2 or CHADS-VASC score, usually more than two, um, and who can take anticoagulation, because this is this how the study was done. Patients should be able to take anticoagulation. Why? Because those patients who have the device will need to take anticoagulation for a period of at least 45 days following device implant. The procedure is fairly simple, especially for electrophysiologists who have done a fair amount of uh, left atrial uh, procedures. Um, it's a catheterization. Uh, the device is uh, essentially uh, made of uh, a self-expanding nitinol um, uh, material, and it has a mesh uh, on its proximal side. This mesh allows back and forth blood to pass through, but it doesn't allow clots to go through. This device is usually squeezed inside the sheath and is mounted on the tip of a catheter. It has a small screw actually right at the tip here on its nipple. And it's passed through the groin all the way into the right atrium. It's done via transeptal puncture. We go and we position after visualization of the left atrial appendage with injection of dye. We position the sheath inside the left atrial appendage and we size based on the imaging as to what size device, because it comes in five different sizes, what kind of size that patient specifically needs. And then the device is advanced and as it is unsheathed, it expands and it sits right at the os or slightly distal to the os of the left atrial appendage. And we make sure that there is no leaks by transesophageal echocardiography. There are no leaks around the device to make sure that there is a good seal and therefore everything that happens in the left atrial appendage will be jailed in there and the clots are not allowed to pass through. And therefore, that's the rationale of decreasing the risk of stroke in these patients. This is implanted permanently. Actually, after the first 45 days or so, the body takes care of it because it forms actually uh, an endothelial uh, layer over it. So it becomes part of the outside structure of the heart. Uh, after a certain amount of time. Some patients might develop actually clots uh, in the left atrial appendage, but they will be contained and they will not pass through the rest of the body. And as I said, because the body shields it away, then it's not part of the intracardiac structures anymore and you don't need to worry about it. If you take 100 patients who, are, uh, who need anticoagulation, because of their atrial fibrillation. Right now, I would say around 10% will probably go for this device or will be candidate for this device, predominantly because of the current indications. I think as we go along, we're gonna, we, we will start to see that 
patients who are contraindicated to anticoagulations, they cannot take anticoagulation and because of the risk of bleeding and they had other issues. Um, Right now, if you look at the indications, they cannot have the device because you need to be on anticoagulation for this device. But there is research coming along, actually, whereby this device will be implanted without the need for immediate anticoagulation. And there is preliminary data to suggest that, that these patients would benefit from this device. And therefore, that will be actually also the bulk of the patients that we will see because a lot of patients have atrial fibrillation, cannot take anticoagulation or on other anticoagulants and they cannot take additional anticoagulation and would benefit actually from having this device in.